Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here with Emery Wells from Frame.io. Welcome, Emery. Thank you, Randy. Wonderful to be here. Well, thanks for joining us. You guys have had some news recently, and it's kind of a big deal. I mean, in addition to um, an update for your existing app, you have introduced your first, I guess, what part of a product line? Could it be, could it be called that now? Well, we, we've had some other, um, other products, other kind of apps in the past. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is a new product. It's, it's uh, called Frame.io Transfer. It's our first cross-platform desktop app. So it's both Mac and PC. We've often got a lot of flack for not supporting our friends on Windows all the time. Of course, our, our, our primary product, Frame.io, is uh, web-based. So you can use it on, on you know, Mac and PC. But one of the challenges that our users have had has been, uh, has been downloading, downloading large files. So we've always had this accelerated uploader that people love and, and, and talk about. And you know, it's, it's so much faster than most solutions on the market or pretty much any solution on the market. Um, and, and that's great. But when it came to downloading those files, there were challenges because when you download a file or a folder or a group of files, in a browser-based application, the browser itself is what handles the download. We, we, cannot, um, we cannot handle that download ourselves. It's just up to the browser. You hit download, that request gets sent to the browser, browser manages the download. So it was really difficult to download large folder structures or just large files in general. And so we've been working on this new app called Frame.io Transfer, which was originally slated for later, later this year. And Frame.io Transfer is gonna become sort of the new file transfer hub for getting media both in and out of, of Frame.io. But we'd actually started building it, focusing on the download because the download was sort of a gap and, and was you know, pre preventing some, was causing some workflow challenges. And with COVID and everybody working from home and working distributed, we felt, you know what, we should get this out now because people are, are, are needing to you know, depend on cloud services a lot more. And you know, what's the kind of the foundation of that is getting files in and out. And so the upload we've had handled, you know, that we have a fantastic tools for uploading um, you know, many, many gigabytes, if not hundreds of gigabytes or terabytes. But anyway, download was a, was a challenge. So we released Frame.io Transfer. It's, it has the same acceleration uh, that you would expect with with the upload service, but now for download. And there's actually one of the one of the neat features that we were able to include in this initial beta is you can download via an EDL or XML. So if you have all your camera original files in Frame.io, and somebody has done an offline edit, and you want to get, and somebody else needs to do an online color grade or a finish or whatever the case may be, you can just send them an XML or an EDL of your edit. And with the Frame.io transfer app, you can say download download via XML, and then it'll just download the files that's in the XML. So, um, so nice workflow, and um, and I and we got a great response. We just released it uh, yesterday. Wow! So have people been uh, gobbling it up? Yeah, people seem to like it, and they seem it's getting a really good response in market. And and like I said, we you know we know it, it, it's it's plugging a, a kind of a key workflow hole with with how people are trying to work right now. Can you, um, can you tell us a little bit about what's new for version 3.6 in, in the app? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, Frame.io is really, it's, it's collaboration platform. It's all about sharing. And so we, we focus on a lot of the kind of core mechanisms of, of sharing. So first we introduced folder sharing. This is something that people have wanted for a very long time. You've always had the ability to share multiple files out, but if you know if you clicked multiple files and then created sent out a review link, all those files would show sort of flattened in one in one view. Now you can share folders. So if you share a folder, send that out, your recipients will see that folder structure. If you change the folder structure on the Frame.io side or kind of in the main application side, that gets reflected. So you can you know change, you can remove stuff and add stuff, and it gets reflected into the the, the link that's already been shared out. So. Um, <clears throat> excited to finally have that. And then in addition to folder sharing, we've, we really focus on the security of sharing. So we added, uh, we added what we call secure sharing or restricted sharing, very much like, uh, like a Google doc where you can specify the emails that you want to have access to a particular document, but well, you can now do that with review links. So we've always had the ability to password protect review links and that's great, but you know, you could, somebody could share a password with somebody else and then get access to a link. Um, the benefits is, you know, the benefits of, of the password protected links is, 
You, you don't have to have, you don't have to authenticate. And sometimes authentication can, you know, some people can, can consider that burdensome for a client. If they're sending a client a link, they don't want them to have to sort of deal with an authentication. In other cases, security is paramount. And you do want to make sure that the person you sent it to is in fact the correct authenticated person. So now when you create a review link, I can say, um, Randy should have access to this. And then you'll get an email and you will be able to authenticate into Frame.io and have access to this review link. Um, and for you, the experience of receiving a review link, what you'll see when you log into Frame.io is a stream, streamlined view that we call inbox. So, you know, Frame.io has projects and projects can be organized with all these file folder structures. But if I were to invite you into a project, you know, there's probably a lot of stuff that is irrelevant to you. And I just want to sort of say, hey, Randy, these are the five things I want you to focus on. So when you get a secure share link, you log into Frame.io and you see everything that's been shared with you laid out in an inbox, just kind of like emails. You can say, oh, well, there's these five items shared with me that Emery sent and these five items shared with me that Alex sent. So uh, it's really great for, you know, executive stakeholder reviews, client reviews, things like that. Um, but we wanted to take it even further. We want to take the security even further. So one of the features I'm most excited about in this release is something that we're calling Watermark ID. Watermark ID is a, the kind of ultimate visual security. So we actually do a real-time and on-demand transcode with the recipient's personal identifying information burned into every single frame. So it's, it's incredibly compute intensive to do this. So if I send you the link, you open a link, you hit play, and the moment you, the file does not exist. The moment you hit play, we initiate a transcode in, in our cloud, and no matter how long the file is, if it's, a, if it's a two hour video, it will start playing back in less than two seconds. And, um, and it'll have your information burned. It'll say Randy, Randy Altman, your IP address, your timestamp, the date, all of that information. And if you come back an hour later, it's a brand new file. Every time you hit play, we're, we're putting that information uh, in, into the file. And uh, it took us, we've been working on this for a really long time. It's about a year that we've been working on this, this uh, watermark, watermark ID. And uh, it's kind of like a live streaming architecture. So, you know, in the same way that when you're, when you're live streaming, so I know you do a lot of live streaming. When you're live streaming, you know, that, that live stream goes up to the cloud and then it has to be sort of distributed out. And, and when it gets distributed out, it often goes through a real-time transcode when it gets distributed out. But the problem with live streaming architecture is that there's actually a lot of latency. So the typical time, if you're at NAB doing a live stream and there's a recipient at home watching it on YouTube or Facebook Live or whatever the case may be, there's typically about a 30-second latency from, you know, from glass to glass. And so a, a typical live streaming architecture doesn't really work for the purposes that we were, that we were trying to do. Cause we knew that when somebody hit play, we couldn't wait 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. It needed to start playing back immediately. Um, so, so, uh, so it's pretty low latency. And if the video is two hours long and you just want to scrub to the middle of the video, well, it'll just buffer for a second and it'll pick up the transcode right in the middle and start playing back again. Um, so it's, it's exciting uh, and we're, we're, we're glad to finally have it out there. This has been a request for a while for the most security sensitive customers. You know, when we talk to studios, now Frame.io, uh, when we started, you know, we, were, we had a lot of individuals and small teams. Now we have Hollywood studios that are using Frame.io. And what they tell us is, yeah, of course we're concerned about hackers or people that are not supposed to have access, getting access to our footage. That's a concern but their much greater concern is the people that are trusted, the people that are supposed to have access. It's mostly uh, the, the trusted inside folks that wind up either intentionally or unintentionally leaking assets. So this, this visual watermarking system is a, is a fantastic deterrent and, and we're, we're pretty excited about it. It is pretty cool. Um, before I let you go, now you come from a post-production background. How, um, how have you viewed all these different remote workflows that are people that people are putting together? Do you think that this is going to sort of follow through even when things open up again? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely going to have an effect. You know, I think that what we're what's what's being proven right now is 
you know, knowledge workers have been able to work remotely for a long time and it's, uh, it's works very well in a lot of industries, but I think that, you know, post-production in particular and filmmaking is one of those, one of those categories that people thought, you know, you can't really do it like you, you, but you can. And what we're proving is you, you can do it. And yes, we need more, we, we need to continue to sort of invest in the tools and technology to make this happen. But um, I think inevitably it'll, it'll absolutely lead to more distributed work, which frankly I kind of think is, is good, good for the industry. Um, I think it'll be healthy for the industry because what it winds up doing is it, it enables, um, it enables more people to be participatory that maybe, you know, live in different geographies. It enables hopefully, um, you know, the more talented folks to be the ones that kind of get, get the jobs rather than sort of being the people that are lo located in a major geo like New York or LA or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but we're absolutely like post-production is that prior to COVID, the filmmaking process, the video creation process was at the, on the precipice of sort of the next major step function change in the way that video gets made. So if you think about like our entire lives, we're probably about the same age, close enough. Our entire lives, our entire lives, there's been really one big step function change in the way that video gets created. And that was probably the transition from analog to digital. And there's been some other major transitions along the way. You could say analog to digital and then sort of digital tape to digital files. And, but I think that uh, the, 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 the kind of next step function change is going to be the transition from, from uh, you know, kind of a non-cloud era to a cloud era. And I think it'll have is as profound an effect on the industry and the way that we work as film to digital. And that was already happening. We were already like kind of right there, but COVID is just accelerating that. So I think that the way that we work is gonna look dramatically different in five years time.